Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to wrap up the new things in Zim version Zim01. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and under news, you can see that we've got a new version, Zim01. This will link through to a bunch of examples for that new version. Or you can get to it by clicking on any banner and you'll see that. We're going to take a look at corners and gradients as well. But before we do that, uh, heading on back to the news, let's take a look through the updates and make sure that any little things, aside from gradients and corners, uh, that we discuss any of those other things, other updates. Uh, you can press updates there, but usually the way I get there is I go to docs. So here's docs across the top and then see updates for changes. That's the way I usually get there. We should maybe make that more prominent because the updates page has become quite spectacular, hasn't it? With lots of examples in it. These are the examples we usually insert into the docs as well, and they also are coming from those examples that, uh, that we'll be showing you. Okay, so let's have a look. We've already dealt with the frame ready and ticker in another bubbling and the global variables as well. We did add an extra global variable called M and that uh, variable stands for mobile. So it turned out that when we put the press down, the down event on mobile, which is uh, right here, the down parameters, um, they were sticking on mobile unless we knew it was mobile and unstuck the downs. So each button needs to check for mobile. Instead of checking in every button, we decided to check in the frame just once. It's a quick check anyway, but check in the frame once and provide a global M for mobile. Video, so this is new and important to us as well. We've already done a bunch of bubblings on videos because back in Zim version Zim 00, that's when we launched vid. We'd all already been able to play video, but we made a sim version of, uh, of that right here. So what happened in Zim00 is when we specified a video with dimensions, what would happen is it would center based on those dimensions. But then if the video was a different size, it would put a different size video in there because we didn't want uh, we wanted to be able to position kind of, but not stretch the video. So if you didn't know how big the video was and put the wrong dimensions here, we didn't want it to be stretched ever, uh, you know, without you knowing. So we've solved that since. And so here's the way that we solve it. Uh, and the other thing is at the time as well, we hadn't really done the lazy loading of it. So in other words, if we didn't have dimensions, for instance, if we provided no dimensions and centered it, it wouldn't know how to center the video. But now that's been fixed. So if you provide no, no dimensions, the video will come in. We'll try and center it, but it, we can't because we don't have any dimensions. So what will happen is that's called an asset container. So it will have a type asset container, just like pics do when you lazy load pictures. And then once the video comes in and we know the dimensions, it's ready to play, we'll change it to vid and we'll recenter based on the new new things. So that's how lazy loading happens with images. And so that's how we're now doing it with video. Great. So in other words, whatever the dimensions of the video will be centered on the stage and you're, you're great. You're fine to go. What happens though, if we uh, remember that you've got to click on the stage or click somewhere on a button before that video plays. Okay. You can't play a video right away without the user interacting. But here, if you have dimensions provided, what we do is by default, we will fit the video into those dimensions. Uh, however, if you pass in full there, then we would actually stretch the video to be. So full will stretch the video to match these dimensions. And the other one that we didn't show here, or maybe it's somewhere, is fill. So there's fill. In this case, we've got the dimensions of the stage and we're going to fill them. So that means that the video will completely fill the stage and overflow potentially if it's a different aspect ratio. So that's the same. The fit, fill, and full are the same as how we handle the frame scaling. 
and the same as how we handle scale 2. So we've now applied that with video to make your video loading much easier. I really like that. All right, we talked about in the past bubblings, we talked about down parameters, we talked about button default colors and corners, auto width and auto height as well. Um, we may have forgotten to mention background color here. So here's another little thing that's handy. Uh, anytime we want to type background color, background color, the problem is often you miss that G and call it back round color. I don't know. I do anyway. So I find that a pain in the neck. Plus it's really long. And do you capitalize the G and not the C? Anyway, um, you can now do BG color with capitals on the C still. We considered making it lowercase, but whatever. So BG color can be used to replace background color with the camel case on the C. And that's also in other places like roll background color. So roll BG color down BG color, and that will save us some typing. Okay, gradients we're going to look at specifically in this bubbling. Content we looked at in another bubbling. Dye, okay, so here is dye, as in dyeing with the color. Um, this is a short chainable method. Well, actually, since it is the spelling of the word dye, it's not really shortened. But all of our short chainables are three, like, um, loc and pose and move, M-O-V, and uh, alp, and ska. So we made a three letter Co color, C-O-L, wouldn't quite work. And we've never contracted C-L-R before like that, but that might have worked. Anyway, we just chose dye. That's kind of fun. And dye will dye the background color if there is a background color, such as a button, or it will dye the color on something like a circle or a rectangle and it's short chainable. That means we don't have to exit out or exit out of our chaining and um, declare a variable and use a property on the variable. Corners. So this is another one that we're looking at specifically in this bubbling. So we'll leave that for just a sec. Series now has a mix. So here's a series. And what mix will do, mix is a method that you can apply to the series. Uh, and then if we're going to tile it, we're tiling these colors. So what will happen is the first four tiles will be uh, scrambled. So uh, what's it called? Randomized of those. The next set of colors will be randomized again, but they won't start with the same color as they ended with previously. So that means if you have uh, a big long row of rectangles and it'll it'll mix this then the next time it'll mix it again but the next color won't be the same as the last color and that means you won't have two colors in a row uh, that are the same <laughs> you have two colors in a row yes but two colors in a row that are the same you won't have however if you used for instance random here on the end then you might it will just randomize these once it's done it would randomize them again and you might end up with two in a row and the other thing is shuffle shuffle would shuffle them and then repeat the shuffle and repeat the shuffle repeat or repeat the same order as was previously shuffled there's other things there too like to be able to reverse the um the series and skip numbers in the series and or duplicate like do two reds two greens two yellows two purples. so have a look at that that makes the series quite powerful one thing to watch out for is that if you're, say, making colors that are all going around in a ring, the very first color and the very last color of all of those might actually um, be the same color. So you'd have to deal with that yourself after building that. We, we, we don't know how many you're going to do, so there's no way of us figuring that out, as far as I can tell. <laughs> All right, drag, remove tweens. This is fairly important. When you drag, it traditionally removes all animations. So tweens are animations. That is because beginner users coming in to use Zim, they'll animate something from here to there and they'll try and drag it and it will conflict. And it was a very common thing for some reason. You know, you're practicing your animation, you're practicing your drag because the template has a drag sort of on it. If you throw an animation in there, 
inevitably the, the first animation people usually do is an X and a Y, and all of a sudden your drag is conflicting with your, your animation. Um, we found that through experience. So we just turned off animations once you drag, unless you specifically said uh, remove tweens um, true. Oh, false. Remove tweens false. I apologize. That's unfortunately remove tweens is a neg like it's a negative kind of a remove and then true and false. I saw it's a bit. Add tweens might have been easier for us to understand. But anyway, this is how it's been done. So now we fix that. Really, if you think about it, the only tweens we need to move, remove, sorry, are the um, X and Y tweens. So if the tween has an X and Y in it, this whole tween will get removed. So if you if you don't want to remove the rotations, but you do want to remove the X thing, which would make sense because you really can't drag that it, it jostles back and forth between the two, so that doesn't look good. Um, then just separate them like this, and it will remove this one, but it won't remove that one. And so that should work. This is how we intended it to be. We couldn't figure out how to do it initially. Now we knew how to do it, but then we forgot. So um, or it kept on saying, "Oh, all oh, right, we got to do that next." And, sort of forgot. So there you go. Yay. Nice. Cams. There's a couple things with the cam cl uh, cam class, but also the cam um, helper library. So one is you can capture motion of a certain color um, and then color sensitivity there as well. This works okay. It wasn't all that great in our low lighting here when we were testing, holding up this green thing, trying to get the cursor to follow this green little thing. You know, it worked, but it wasn't totally precise all the time. Uh, along those lines, we did, in the example, we did increase our precision uh, to make that work a bit better. Uh, that's that's here. So precision, default precision, I think is 0.2 or something. So we, we bumped that up. That means it's testing more pixels, basically. Because uh, if you're trying to make this little green box go, it sometimes helps to have more pixels capturing the motion of that box. Oh, hey, thanks. Thanks, uh, Carl, for um, prompting us with that. But, you know, we've been intending to do that all along anyway. And then cam facing mode. That's handy. So we realized we didn't have, well, actually, Amy told us, Amy Hanya, thank you, told us that we had no way on mobile to specify front or the user camera or the environment camera. Now we do with the facing mode right there. So facing mode environment means the back camera. Um, facing mode user would be the front. And here we have an example where we're toggling between those two. So that's cool. Uh, this config thing that's here, config, actually the facing mode's part of config. The, the video tag has all sorts of configuration that can be done to it. And we had abstracted that away so you couldn't get to it. Well, now we're saying, hey, go ahead and pass that all in if you want with config. And we've singled out the facing mode, which is part of that config as, as well. But there's maybe, I don't know, 50 things in the config that you can do to set the video. And that can just be passed through now as a parameter along with the HTML config object, as it says, whatever right there. There are general updates as well, but I don't want this to go too long. So like uh, right to left support for label on path, and label on arc, that's nice. I'll let you read through those, how about that? And then remember to check patches as we go as well. If we go top, what we've done is any patches. So here's the Zim version, Zim 01. Patches will jump you down to the patches. If we were in Zim 00, there's the patches. And you can see that we get a lot of patches for our, our version. The reason for that, or the way that we're doing things now, is we're fairly stable. So we're not launching any more major versions. Zim version Zim will be the last major version of Zim. In the end, we'll probably drop the Zim version Zim and just call it Zim 01, Zim 00. So as we progress here, this will be Zim 02. Two, Zim03. So we don't have, those are subversions. So we don't have any um, sub subversions. We're not doing Zim01.1, for instance. So we're just going, this is a nice, nice um, amount of changes as our library, our framework, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just called Zimmer Library. Oh my gosh. As our framework um, has been around for quite some time. So we've gone through 10 major versions. All of these had subversions and sub subversions. 10.4.3, 10.4.4, etc. Um, so we found that we we are doing the patching in between these subversions. So 0, 0 to 0, 1, we're calling a subversion. Although eventually we maybe just call them versions. Uh, we're doing patches. And those patches won't have anything that breaks your code. So if we change, have to insert a parameter, we have to wait until the next version. And that's how we're updating. All right, uh, speaking of updating, let's take a look at the corners. Okay, so we're looking at corners and the other one was gradients. There's gradients, but we're gonna, corners to, we're gonna look at corners first. Here we go. So we now have the ability to change the horizontal part of a corner and the vertical part separately. So in the past, we could say corner of 10 and all corners would have a radius of 10. If we put four numbers in here, then we could say, hey, the top left corner has a radius of 10, uh, the top right corner has a radius of 50, etc. But they were still the same, horizontal, vertical, so kind of a balanced corner. Well, HTML, CSS can do each side specifically, so horizontal, vertical, and so we brought that into Zim as well. So how you do that is that means that the horizontal aspect of the corner will be 100 here, the vertical aspect of all the corners will be 50 probably better if I show you these. And let's take a look at this example right here, but uh, in code. So we'll pop on out, go to the top. And remember on the banner here, we can get to all of the new stuff right here. And there's the corner. So in this case, the top left corner is going to have a horizontal portion of 100. So this is 100 here. I've got these dash to help us. It's going to have a vertical of 50, so that's 50. And then it makes a corner from here, from the 100 to the 50. And therefore the slope is less here. It comes on down. The top right is the same, 150. 150. The bottom right is 150 over, so the horizontal is 150. Not 100, but 50 more, 150. And then the vertical aspect is 250, 250. So this must be 300 high. This is 50, this is 250, 300 high. And you can see the corner slopes right up and joins the other corner. Very nice, huh? If we had no corner at the top and bottom, so if these were just said zero and zero, not in an array, you don't have to, like this could just be zero, not the array here, zero here, and then the array here, then it would, come up to a sharp corner and look like a bowl. Isn't that nice? Okay, so there you go. Remember that when you're applying styles to this, you'll need to um, do the no pick because the cor like any, any styles does a pick, zim v values. So you'll put squiggly brackets, no pick, colon, and all this array stuff. Otherwise, it would use zim v and it would say, oh, okay, you're wanting us to randomly pick from this outer array and it would pick, say, this one right here. And then it would say, oh, since ZimV is recursive, it would say, oh, the result is an array, so I'll pick from within that array. And it might pick 150. Therefore, you get a corner of 150 on each corner, unless you use no pick for style. For the parameter, we've turned the um, ZimV off. Like, not all parameters have ZimV, and the corner parameter, it's just, it would have been awkward. So we don't do ZimV on the corner parameter. But all styles have ZimV. Okay, so anytime you have a style that's an object literal or an array, you'll need to no pick that. It doesn't happen often. Corner, though, is the most prominent one of that situation. All right, let's go look at the gradient then. Uh, the gradient is in this example right here in a few places. It's funny, we probably see it here, and that's the radial one, but we're going, well, what about this one? Ah, so the, back, the whole background rectangle here is white in the corner and misty on the bottom corner here, 45 degrees. So it's cutting 45 degrees across here. 
Um, and that's with an angle. So isn't that cool? That's a, a new short way of doing this. The old way still works as well as, as we'll, we'll go into some code and, and work through these. Here's the radial one with just the colors. So you could also put in three or four colors here and they would evenly distribute across. So what we've done is we measure, we know how big the object is. So even though the color is here, once we apply the color, then we redo the gradient. Well, we don't redo it. Then that's when we actually do the gradient. And um, uh, we use the size of the object to handle that. Unless we could still pass the X and the Y, starting X, starting Y, ending X, ending Y. So the old format of gradient still works. Let's go in and take a look at the code for that. Okay, we'll reduce this down. Here's the content example that we were on, and there's the rectangle width and height of the stage with our new cons our new um, globals there, and a new gradient color I missed, and we'll open that up here in Browser Plus. Let's change it to red so we can see that a bit better. And there it is going on the angle. Okay. We could also um, uh, make that a 90 degree angle. And then it goes down. If it's a zero degree angle, then, or, or if you don't have an angle, then it goes left to right. Uh, let's put it back to the 45. Uh, the other thing you can do is still insert the, the stops here, which would normally be zero, 01, like that. So those are called stops. But if I change that to 0 0.5, what that means, it will be white from 0 to 0 0.5. And then from 0 0.5 to 1, it will be going from white to red. So if we save that, there it is mostly white. And then the, to the last half, it, it distributes the gradient. Isn't that nice? So uh, a full full out gradient thing where you're going uh, 0 to 0 to or 400 to zero or something like that, that would um, distribute it across the top, so or across the side. So what we're doing is going um, point, well, let's go back to zero there. It makes a bit more sense. So from zero to 400 pixels, so somewhere in here, zero to 400 pixels is our gradient. And the rest is, is going to be red. Okay, that's how it was, but if, and in the past, if we didn't provide those things, it would default to um, uh, 100 across, and which was no good. So now we default to how far across it is, and we know um, how to deal with that. So, super. Just undo that. And that is, well, let's get rid of that red too. There we go, back to mist. That has been a Zimbubbling, uh, Zimbubbling, and we've made use of the updates. Let's just take you, oh, that's Zim on here, but I want to go back on to Zim outside here. Just tell you what we're up to now, because we've got a lot of uh, updates to put in place. The latest things that are happening are supposed to be in tips, so we need to update tips. Uh, because they're still showing the old frame dot on ready and, and the parameter order has changed in here, for instance. So we'll get there. Our tips were updated to odd and pick, although I see that we've got a, an asset there. I thought we updated all those. There's a pick right there. Um, so we keep the, the tips up to date and we'll be adjusting that soon. That's what we're going to next do next after the bubblings. We also have things like school, so we need to update the templates and stuff in school. A lot of school is um, the templates built for you. Uh, it's only once we get down to actually talking about the templates here, templates and building, that we'll have to make some changes. But there could be other things from Zim version Zim01 that we might want to bring in here, like pick, pick. For instance, new pick. This will all be filled with asset stuff anytime we load assets. So school is one thing. Kids as well. If yeah, we'll be updating kids, and also on examples, there is. If we go to the collections version here, there's Zimbits. So the Zimbits 
need to be updated. All of these are, uh, I think, Zimcat, so they missed even Zim NFT. There wasn't really much difference between cat and NFT um, in terms of every, everything in bits. Bits is very basic usually, so everything in bits has been around forever, fairly old. Um, but still, that that's the idea, that, that the basics. But we'll update this to Zim version Zim01 as well. So that's the plans. I am Dr. Abstract, this little fellow here. And it was great to see you here. If you have any comments or suggestions or questions or just want to hang out with us, come visit us, zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. Uh, I'd love to meet you. If we meet you, come on into the Pagoda Scope too. This is a picture of us hanging out in the Pagoda Scope, although they don't use Zim, but they certainly love Zim because there's all sorts of art made by Zim all around in this uh, VR environment. We happen to be in a little art gallery there, but actually in the pagoda scope itself, we dance inside of this um, kaleidoscope. It's shaped like a pagoda. Uh, there's art NFTs all around, and so they know about Zim from there. Although they aren't all coders, it would be great to see some of you who do code in Zim. Come on in, hang with us. Love to see you there. Bye-bye. Uh, Have a great day or night, and I'm looking forward to updating all of those parts on the site that we just mentioned. Cheers.